You know, for me, this past week has been pretty, pretty rewarding for kind of my own mental health and um, kind of the feeling of control of my life. Um, the amount of times that on weekends I find that I kind of, I just get in the same headspace um, where I feel trapped, like I have to be doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing, or, you know, it's a lot of should be doing this, or I have to be doing this. Um, and my, my weekends are very, very, it's like, what do I want to do? And some of the best weekends that I've had has been, you know, I want to be helping out with people, but you know, there's nothing substantial going on, like events or anything like that, that is specifically helping people. I get kind of sad. It doesn't seem like a purpose for the weekend. You know, for me, it was after my therapy session on Monday, I really started to think, like, what the fuck, what, why? <laughs> why am I feeling so bad on the weekend? Why do I feel like I have no choice in what I do on the weekends or I have no passion for doing anything on the weekend? Um, and I can't remember how it went. Um, but I ended up purchasing this book um, that I can't remember the name of, but essentially it's about a book like how to deal with pro uh, chronic procrastination. And I think back to when I was younger to all the essays, writing assignments, journals, anything that had to do with words when I was really young, you know, even when I was in, you know, grade one, I remember, I always had this fear, like I was never good enough for it. whatever I write down was just, will never be good enough for why, for why write something down in the first place. Like if I'm writing something that's not good enough, well, that's that was very scary for me. It was more scary to write something and have it be critiqued than myself being critiqued if I didn't do anything. And I think about that to how that kind of like shapes me today. And I get pretty scared when I feel like people are critiquing me or where it's something that my parents would be on me for when I would be back at home. Just the, the whole idea of, for me, has been rough to try to keep things clean, like keep my room in order and tidy how, like how my mom would want me to do it. And it really, really affects me because I never, with cleaning and all that stuff, it never feels good enough. Like my mom would either keep nagging us to, keep, to, to clean whatever we were doing, or she would just do it herself. And maybe I didn't want it to be cleaned in the first place. Maybe I didn't mind it being a little messy, but it just felt like someone was watching over you and critiquing you and was gonna do it no matter if you did it well or not. And that's like, oh, why do it at all if it's just gonna be critiqued? Um, and I think back to the writing with my dad, it's, I would get yelled at as a kid for procrastinating, for not having enough things done. And that would just increase the procrastination because you know, I wouldn't wanna do anything getting yelled at. Yes, I could, I could do it, but it's 
the internal yelling at yourself when you're doing something when it has to be perfect, when it feels like it has to be perfect. Um, and if we just keep going back and forth like that to where I could, it's such a good deadline to be met, my dad would have to help me a lot either write some stuff or edit everything or something like that. And I think back to my first year when I had a, a final report to do one of uh, my speech communications courses and I couldn't get it done. I didn't have the motivation. So literally my dad probably wrote half of it. And I just think it's like, what a, what a tough way to go where you procrastinate so much, you have so much fear in doing something that someone has to come in and fix it for you while yelling at you for not doing it. It's like makes you feel helpless and also makes you feel unworthy, unworthy of, especially from a family member, unworthy of like love. And I've been thinking about the procrastination because there's so many things in my life which I do so well, but there are other aspects that I just will neglect because they're too scary. The ramifications of not doing it, um, or the immediate feelings of that are less than actually doing it, actually facing it. So that's what I kind of been dealing with. But this past week, after reading this, or parts of this book, just the idea of how ingrained the should haves um, and the need tos a bit in my life or it came to that writing it's just like you know you should have gotten this done earlier or and it's like now now I have to grind this out for X amount of hours working non-stop because of the procrastination it's very much felt like I have to do something I should do it um, and if I don't do it then that's a you know I don't have control don't have willpower stuff like that. I always thought at the start that it was something innate about me, that it was like my fault for procrastinating um, or for my impulsive ways or just how I kind of act um, or I have had acted in the past. And now that I look back on it, um, with some clarity, some intuition about it. It was never me specifically that had those problems. It was always put on or put towards me through my living situation or um, my, the, my schooling. And it wasn't that I was a born procrastinator, it was just a coping mechanism for all the stress and strain that my family's relationships with me and hard work and themselves. Um, it wasn't my fault that you know, I had this coping mechanism of not doing things and neglecting it. Um, and I wonder that the, if the lack of stability in my family, you know, there's a lot of things that were stable, money and um, other things like, I can't think of it. Emotionally, there was not anything stable about my family, even though on the outside it looked pretty, pretty good. And when you're a kid, there's, Things aren't going well. There's conflict. What's the way to deal with conflict? Well, there's you can fight the conflict. Um, if you're the child, you're never going to win against your parents if you're fighting a conflict. And uh, you can um, you can leave the conflict. But if you're living in a household that is only ever 
at odds with each other, that competition is the main goal, uh, and that you know, the feelings of uh, you're never good enough. How can you leave? It's always there. You can't leave as a child. You can't go somewhere else. You have to stay in that household for however, like 18 years. There's no way to leave. So the only other option is to to freeze, which is often what I've been reading is just to not do anything, to go inside the mind and either think about alternative um, realities, so daydreaming, or just feel like you're so burdened with things that you just gave in. And that was for what I feel like right now, and felt like forever. It's like, I always thought the problem was me, internally, um, because there was no way out. There's no way out. Who, who are you to blame if there's no way out? Now I know it's not myself, but it's really interesting that I feel like or felt like I had, had a choice in the matter of like if I worked harder, I could procrastinate less. If I had more willpower, I could procrastinate less. And get things done and get more approval and feel better. And now that I think about it, it was never my choice to start procrastinating. It was just a, a coping mechanism for being in that household that didn't value my personality, didn't value um, collectiveness and togetherness and cooperativeness. It just wasn't there. And I feel so strongly about this now because I don't know if they parents understand that they're not, not what their effect on me is um, and you know honestly it's like one of those like I don't feel like putting on enough or any more effort into my relationship with them because I would need to see change to feel welcomed. It's been the same, it's been the same, their relationship has been the same way, just with different coats of paint throughout my whole life. It's always been conflict. And even if it did change, I go home and I still feel the anxiety of being in this place that was never safe to begin with. Um, but, this week has been really good. This week has been one of the best weeks I've had um, in a while. Maybe this semester, uh, I haven't been counting. Um, but the, and that's not for the lack of, uh, of failing, lack of uh, doing things that I shouldn't be doing, or I feel like I shouldn't be doing, or coping, stress, and you know, nothing like that. There's a lot of stress this week. Um, I just feel, so much, I feel like I'm choosing more and more of my, my outcomes, um, like I have choices, because whenever I feel like I don't have a choice, I have a second choice, that's not doing it, if I, if I have the choice to do it or not to do it, I'm always not doing it, because it's too scary to do it when you have to do it, but now I'm trying to introduce that third option where if you know, I choose to do it, I change the conditions a little bit, or if I do something else um, that's like it, productive, um, that I can do that, enjoy it, and then come back to it later, not feel overburdened by how much pain that some of the things I have to go through, self-inflicting pain that I kind of force myself through. Um, I don't want to force myself through any more pain anymore if I can. Uh, it will come, but I don't want to force it. Because the whole idea of procrastination, um, in my mind, is just the avoidance of pain. 
can. I just learned <laughs> the pain um, or like my self, my self uh, esteem and all that stuff is not my doing. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a really good weekend this weekend, especially because weekends are really tough because like it's too free. <laughs> There's too many things that you could be doing. Um, and it's so much easier during a, a weekday because you have set times where you're supposed to be doing something and it's like, kind of gets you in that mindset of, yeah, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So the motivation of it, it's like, oh, it's 8.30, okay, gotta get to work. Or, you know, oh, it's 12 o'clock, maybe I'll take a lunch break. You don't really get that when you're on the weekend. You have the choice, but the shoulds in the past engulfed me with guilt, fear, and uncomfortableness. And this weekend, I ended up trying to make a schedule um, to where I would follow it and kind of um, understand uh, my energy levels and what I can do. And um, I <laughs> didn't follow it that greatly. But I feel like at the start of the day, what really helped was, you know, getting that first thing done, checking it off. And it gave me a little bit more drive, a little bit more um, momentum and motivation to get it done because there's a, there is an end in sight. There's also time where I could just detox and there's that I could play games and that's like, this time is for games. I shouldn't be doing any of other stuff because I'm taking time to energize myself right now. And I think that's so important in my life because I just had so much like difficulty having fun. Because I, should, I feel like for my parents, I should be doing so any waking moment, I should be doing um, something productive to where I am, making a better tomorrow of myself, for myself. And if you're making a better tomorrow of yourself, you're not enjoying the present of the better day that you've already created. You're just always looking for what's next, what's next, what's next. That's a big thing, what's, what's next. And if you know that there could be a, a what's next left and you're not going to be you know, happy that with the whatever outcome or whatever progress that you're getting in the present but you're always hoping for a better future and it never comes because that future is just has to be better than the present future it's so draining i'm feeling that right now where sitting down where I am and saying, you know, Michael, you've done something amazing today. You got out of bed <laughs> 15 minutes after your alarm went off. <laughs> you can rest for the whole day. It's like something like that, like ch um, cherishing the, the small victories of the day. It doesn't have to be a big one. And I'm trying to get better at that. And this week has been really good. It's been really good stepping stone for me and I feel like I am not happy <laughs> but I am more delicate on myself it's awesome awesome I, I, I love hearing that I am more delicate with myself um and it's one of those things like it's so ingrained in me to procrastinate that it's going to be a while until I don't procrastinate. I think everyone procrastinates. There's always something that people fear that they'd rather do by themselves, or rather not do than to do. Just I think about all the people, you know, that say that they want to go on runs and don't go on runs um, because of something. And, you know, in, in back in the day, like a week ago, I'd be like, oh, you had a little bit more motivation, a little power, you would get out there and grind it. Um, but 
then I'd just be projecting my you know, self-hatred. So there's no need to do that. I don't have to. It's okay to procrastinate. It's okay to listen to your body once they need. It's okay to accept that there is anxiety there. I think that's really amazing. Um, when you're able to do that, um, because it makes the next day so much more enjoyable. And I'm definitely on the side of fearing a lot. Fear is good in the right quantities, and I fear way too much is the most pathetic thing. So I can definitely push it, push the pendulum towards the other side. Um, but I was there, I, there's no way of beating procrastination, it will happen. I can change my reaction to things not going right, things out of my control or things in my control that I don't have the energy for. So I change my shoulds to I want, I want to do something. Um, that's one of the key goals that I have for myself right now. And I think that's going to be so much easier later on with being more resilient is having those I want to's. I think that's a great goal of mine. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad, I'm really happy that I'm able to have this presence of mind and convert my shits to I wants. Because that's, that's really heavy. If you feel like you're always should be doing something. That's a big burden to carry around all day. And if you don't, you know, if that's always on your back and there's no way of getting out of it, then you're trapped. There's no way out. I don't want to know way out. I don't mind being trapped for a little bit, but I want a way out eventually. I want to see that light at the end of the tunnel. So, yeah. I just want to kind of leave this off with um, with, the, with the with the students that I see nowadays having the role of you know, being a tutor in first years, there is a lot of fear about imperfection, um, and I see a lot of students. I hear from them that they're not getting enough sleep. They're not eating well. They're having a lot of anxiety with their schoolwork and who they are. And first year's hard, <laughs> very hard, because you're in a new environment. You have to make friends. You have to cope with the social instability, right? Not even the academic instability. It's not a lot of stability in first year. And the way that I see this is being a tutor is, is they procrastinate until the last minute and I was that student I'm still that student a little bit a lot <laughs> and I think the best way for them to see if they can you know beat it um, or cope with it not beat it uh, they can shake hands with the procrastination is to Except the, that they're going to fail once in a while. Not fail as a failing mark, but a failing... A feeling of failure. And it's going to happen. There's going to be things that... Uh, when you are young, you don't have all the information on the best for you. Or things don't go quite to plan. And if you... If failure is not an option... <laughs> You're not going to try to fail. You're just not going to do it. And failing will be the default. Um, the default way. It's passive failing. Active failing is when you grow. Passive fear and failing is when you shrink. And I think if you ease up the consequences on yourself, to yourself, that you'll, you'll be able to kind of cope with it a little bit better. Um, and even if you don't, it's okay to not cope. There's a lot of other people around that are struggling with the same 
ideas um, and problems. It happens to the best of us. I mean, the high performing student, athlete, or person, it's always going to be roadblocks of not feeling good enough. You know, if you don't feel good enough, you're going to work harder to better yourself, to get into a better situation. But if you always feel not good enough, then you, yeah, you're just stuck in this void of no, there's no solution. If you don't see a solution, you, you just freeze. I freeze for 18 years of my life, 20 years of my life. I know it'll probably be a little bit more, a few more years, but I'm on the path where I'm more aware of who I am, what I am, how I am, and I'm really happy with the steps I took this week.